Good afternoon, Mr. Benwick. Well, what is it? A new experiment? I'm sorry to bother you again so soon. Perhaps it's more convenient for you, Lieutenant, if you just move in one of our guest rooms. I'm a nuisance, I know, but I do have a problem. I need your help. It won't take long. It's about these tapes. What about it? I wonder if you can run them for me. I'm sure you can explain this. It's a technical question. This is the last time. I promise it will not happen again. Farewell, Lieutenant. I'll take your word for it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this, the next episode of the Colombo Confab podcast. Good talk, Sean. This... <laughs> Hi, Steve. Have you done something with your hair? Yes, I put a bowl on it, and I, uh, I just trimmed off the edges. <laughs> Does it look nice? Then, of course, you're referring to Oscar Werner in playback. Had to look up Oscar Werner. He has not had... Well, people are going to send me tweets saying, You're wrong! Blah, 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 blah. Oh. He was in a little movie called Fahrenheit 451. Do you remember uh, that? I saw that in high school, which was, what, really? 35 years ago or whatever. I don't even know okay. how long ago it was. Well, that's not as long as this was. <clears throat> this aired This aired in 1975, yes. so it makes it the same age as me. <gasps> yeah, this was aired um, a few months before I was born, but it's not my birthday, Colombo. That would be Forgotten Lady. I wasn't born on that day that it was aired, but nobody cares. Why oh, am no I talking cares. about this? Well, yes, and so we, we should say that Oscar, uh, in this episode of uh, Playback, uh, he plays Harold Van Wick, who is... Uh, who is the inventor of the clapper, by the way. Didn't know if you knew that. <laughs> and um And the and the predominant chili bowl haircut style that yeah. was so rampantly popular do you, back then. Do you uh <laughs> there's something special about this this episode. Do you want to share with folks why this episode is special uh, for you and me? Yeah, so this was almost the reason why I never watched or would do a Columbo podcast with you. <laughs> okay. This I yeah, this this you you had this grand idea. So yeah, back way back when uh, we were doing the Doctor Who thing, um, I came over and you wanted to show me this great TV program called Columbo. And for what <laughs> unknown and godforsaken reason, you thought that this would be the show that would win me, or this episode would win me over. I just can't wait till we get to the end review because I can't wait to tell you how I really okay. feel about this okay. episode. Uh, but. Uh this was not something you should show <laughs> for all those out there who want to show Columbo to a person who's never ever seen it or aware of the program. Don't show them this, please just don't do it. Wow. See, I thought that this was a gateway drug because no. I just, well, we're going to, we're going to get into it, I guess. Thankfully but, uh... the next episode you showed me after this one was the one that hooked me. So, uh, and that, and that was a uh, negative reaction. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, um, of course the scotch may have helped Harold... <laughs> you, you know what you volunteered. I remember you said, you know what, let's, let's, let's try out that Columbo show. You like, let's so see another much. one. Well, I enjoyed <laughs> Peter Falk in it, but the story <laughs> and the, the, the murderer, all those, that, everything else about it. I didn't enjoy. Oh, wait, sh I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that just yet. We'll get there. <laughs> But I remember you repeatedly saying, oh, my, and laughing while you were saying it. Oh, my God, he's so annoying. Because there are a couple of scenes where he does the, you know, just one more thing, at, uh, you yeah. know, thing. And just does not leave this guy alone at yeah. all for rightful reasons. Right. So uh, how does this little ditty start well, out? Okay, well, we see that Harold uh, is cutting away a pane of glass in his own home. Uh, mm -hmm. Not sure really why, but uh, we're going to find out. It's a plot to kill his mother-in-law. Um, yeah. So, you know those things that people use in movies to take out planes of glass? It's kind of like a handheld thing. It's like a little suction cup, you I know, thought. No? Yeah, yeah. Where do you get those? Why? Is there a burglar store that you can go to get those? I don't know. Probably you got it from his favorite S&M shop. I don't know. Doesn't it seem like he would be into some really kinky shit? Yeah, I, th I think he is, probably, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Some really 
nasty misogynist shit. He's a fucking asshole, by the way. It never really occurred to me what a fucking asshole this guy is. Wow. I mean, but we'll get into it. Okay, so we'll anyways, uh, so we're introduced to his homestead. He pulls up through a security gate where we meet Baxter, the uh, security guard. Uh, he's a creepy guy, too. Not that the actor portrays him as such, but he's watching everything that's going on in the home in monitors out in the uh, <laughs> the security house or whatever you call that little shack thing. Yeah, he basically has the most boring job. Ever just watching, yeah, he's just watching them yeah. do their thing. I mean, it'd be like watching the uh, instead of the uh, I don't know <laughs> the Benny Hill show. You're watching the Harold Van Wick show, <laughs> which yeah, not as not as entertaining. I'm wondering, I'm wondering it whether is. cameras in the bedrooms. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, there there was that one guy years ago that did a documentary, and um, he hooked up his entire apartment with cameras mm -hmm. and then he the they played a live stream of them on the internet he was trying to make some sort of social experiment yeah. and the thing that I, he made a documentary about it i'm so sorry i can't remember the name of the documentary because he got he broke up with his girlfriend over it because she didn't like the idea mm -hmm. of cameras being everywhere but what i remember is that he fucking had put a camera in the toilet so you would not just see him go and sit on the toilet. You would actually see. Oh. The, the, I mean, that's just ridiculous. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I think Carol you know, would have been I into get, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah. So so Harold is a. Um, there's a name for people like this. They are really into gadgets. Um, everything is automated. Security cameras everywhere. Almost everywhere in the house. Um, what else? Uh, so he's got doors that open and close by, by clapping. clapping. Um, he has his the, the doors that don't have knobs. I don't know if you noticed the front doors didn't have door knobs. Uh, some kind of electronic lighted device on them. Uh, yeah, but but as he explains to his mother in law that these devices fulfill a very serious need, and that his his wife. Um, whose name Margaret is no Margaret's the name of the victim Elizabeth Gina Rollins in the wheelchair. Uh, fun fact about Gina Rollins: uh, she was married to Peter uh, John Cassavetes, of course, who play who was a previous Colombo murderer mm -hmm. in Etude and Etude and Black. Um, so she was kind of like that click with you know John Cassavetes, Peter Falk, and Ben Gazzara. She probably partook in a few drunken incidents, and she's still with us. And she's very beautiful and sweet in this, uh, which makes him all the more nastier an asshole. Well, uh, you know, and I do get this, though, Can, if you don't mind me kind of just trashing Harold a little bit more. Um, okay, no, feel free to trash this guy. Uh, so I don't know if if he was he once worked with the great Santini in the Nazi concentration camps, but I wouldn't be surprised if they knew one another when they were in the service together. Oh, gosh. Well, his German heritage is not really the subject for anything. <laughs> I do I do think, though, that he and Dale Kingston, the uh, the famous art critic, may have, uh, you know, met mm. at a bar one time and discussed how to get alibis if they were going to commit the perfect crime. But mm. um, so oh, so his mother in law. Yeah, so, yeah it Margaret, does not like. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Well, it's mutual. They yeah. don't like each other. I'm sorry. You were about to say yeah. something. Uh, no, I was going to say his mother-in-law is uh, she's telling basically telling him I'm I'm firing you for Metis Electronics. Mm -hmm. um, she he's the CEO or something to that effect, but she's the main shareholder and she's like I want your resignation by tomorrow, or I'm going to tell your wife my, her daughter about all these little affairs that he's been having. Right, probably with a number of probably less than yeah they nice they women. hint they uh, hint at early in the episode that he does fraternize with other younger ladies um so i i think the the relationship between the mother-in-law or margaret i guess you call her by her name uh margaret yeah. and harold uh, they don't really get along it seems like a um very passive aggressive kind of relationship they they'll say little wisecracks at each other trying to dig at the other um one of them. Well, that oh, that was one of the one that I tried on you. Have you done something with your hair? And she's like, "No, that's what I thought." Yeah, you did. I don't remember you saying that to me. Yeah, um, but you. But she's talking about uh, Margaret's talking about Harold before he walks in, and she's talking to her daughter um, Elizabeth, who's in a wheelchair, uh, and her son Arthur. Um, 
and something to the effect she says, I don't understand why you like him. And and she continues, I mean, in business, not not in bed. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. And that's when he walks and, in. And, you yeah. know, Arthur's not in this a lot, but, you know, he works at Midas Electronics as well. But you just kind of get the idea that he's kind of a milksop. Yeah. He has a line where he's like, Harold's right, right mother. The market's taken a terrible beating. And I'm like, are you fake using an English accent or are you just an idiot? Like, what are you? Um, but what I do find fascinating is that despite how despicable Harold is, he really does treat his wife like a fucking queen. He well, does. Well, come on. Uh, he does it. He's using her, in my opinion. He, If it wasn't for her yeah. wealth, he wouldn't be married or be interested in her. Uh, the scenes before the uh, the murder take place, he is very he's very sweet with her. He's uh, you know, and she's sweet too. Um, later on, not so much. But um, all right, I guess we got to talk about the murder. Yeah. We talk about so this, yeah. This. So so yeah. Margaret has basically said Q four profits are way under. You know, give me your resignation. This, of course, at this point, her daughter Elizabeth and son Arthur have left. So it's just the two of them. And she, yeah, that's when she gives him the ultimatum, like, you will give me your resignation in the morning. And, um, you know, so she said something else. What was it? Very, very demeaning to him. Um, you can stand on your head for all, <laughs> yeah. uh, for a while. Yeah, it was a lot of whatever prepares you for yeah. 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 But I, I think it's interesting to note that after this conversation, Margaret just enjoys sitting in a room, uh, drinking brandy yeah, listening and listening to Chopin, to Chopin yeah. which I really wish that I was the person who could do that. Just sit in a oh, room. Oh, that's what I'm doing in my retirement years. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> Nowadays, it would be like, okay, I'm drinking scotch and watching cat videos. And, and, your, and your caretaker would be like, keeps clapping at the doors. I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> my caretaker? Oh. oh, yeah, my little uh, cute Asian caretaker. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's move on. Just... So oh, Latino would be okay. Okay, yeah. And also, it should be said before we move on to the next scene that Margaret has also told Harold uh, that Arthur will be made president of the company. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, which I, you know, I don't know if I would have gone as far to murder Margaret because of this. I just would have sucked up to Arthur. And I'm sure Arthur would have kept him in some kind of, you know, prominent position in the company. Yeah, that's true. But uh, especially since Margaret probably didn't have long to live anyway. I mean, she looks like an elderly woman. Um, I guess. Um, I would have kept feed, but let's it, talk about how, 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 brandy how he, that liver would have like, stopped working after a while. <laughs> oh, man. She was really rocking that brandy. Did you see when she took her last swig of brandy? She just sort of like went, oh, and she put the brandy glass. She was really I rocking think she that. was. I think the actress was really drinking brandy. <laughs> 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 I think she was having a good time. Yeah. She's like, good gig. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, um, so we also find out that Margaret never trusted Harold. Uh, she did hire a private investigator and was able to find out, yes, he was fooling around with younger women in other parts of the country. Um, yeah. So, okay, so he's going to kill yeah, her. Yeah, he's got, he's, so he's he's got his, he now does. we have our motive. Why, why yeah. is poor Margaret going to get it? He basically has a bunch. I don't, I'm going to call them VCRs, but they're not VCRs, uh, but they're before VCRs. They're, yeah, this is yeah, they're big computer like machines that run tapes. So what he does is um, he shoots Margaret while running a tape of an empty study. He shoots her in the study, so mm -hmm. the boring uh, police or security Baxter. guard doesn't see her get shot. Okay. And this is explained very, uh, shown very well, by the way. I, I thought mm -hmm. because it's, it's it, I was wondering how we were going to explain this. So he shoots her. Um, then uh, his pesky wife Elizabeth is it Elizabeth? It's Elizabeth, yeah. Is that her? Uh, she calls from upstairs saying, "Oh, I thought I heard something." Well, yeah, and we should we should point um, out that uh, Elizabeth and the daughter Elizabeth and Harold were going to go to an art show together, but uh, Harold. I, he's almost like her father in a way. He's like, no, no, you need to stay behind. It's going to be crowded and and you need your rest. So he gives her a sleeping pill. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Uh, so he, he, he treats her like that. He treats her like a child throughout the whole episode. And she accepts it. Um, mm -hmm. I, her, her mother's obviously very domineering. So I, I guess she just equates that 
personality trait is love. I don't know. But yeah, it's yeah. a really good point that I've never thought of. And I've seen this episode 247 Ugh. times. Um, but uh, yeah. so, yeah. So I just want to say that. So he did give her a sleeping pill. He uh, Harold shoots Margaret. Of course, Elizabeth wakes up. She does. She's not sure what she heard, though. Right. Yeah. She could have been dreaming. Mm-hmm. She could have heard something else completely different. And he reassures her, don't worry about it. Uh, your mother's in the sitting room with her brandy and listening to Chopin. And uh, I'm about to leave to go to the uh, art gallery. And so he leaves. And then I think at 930 is when he has a timer go off that will show Margaret being shot right. in the study while he has a perfectly good alibi at an art gallery. And he has a super watch, as one character yes, puts it yes, later on. Yes, right. Which is basically just a digital watch, which I'm assuming those did not exist in 1975. Uh, I'm sure they did. They must have been very expensive. But, um, yeah. I mean, they're not like the $5 watches you can get at the Dollar General now. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that, you know, come with like little My Little Pony caricatures on it or something. Uh, and one thing uh, one thing he does when he leaves is he tells Baxter, the security guard, I'll be at this number. And he writes down the number of the art gallery. And he also mentions the time magazine. as he's leaving. So we always know. Yes. That's yes. a clue. If you mention the time or ask somebody for the time, you're trying to place yourself. Yeah. Give yourself That's why I was alibi. saying Dale, Dale Kingston in Suitable for Framing does that. And he gets an, a, a, an alibi by going to a, a, a art show. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, similarity, similarities. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, so Harold goes to the show. Um, I guess he's, he's looking for something new to put in the living room. Not really sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look I, at this, look, look, look at this, like, I, look for women. That's come on. Realistically, that's, that's what he's doing. He's looking yeah. for women. Cause there's this attractive lady and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, talk about her in a moment. Oh, okay. Um, there's this new, and he tells the owner, Oh, you see oh it was, it's called nice, the Grant, pretty new the girl. Grant gallery. That was the name of the. That's right. So this, uh, there's this act. The actress who plays the pretty lady that greets him at the art gallery. Mm-hmm. Uh, her name is uh, Trisha Noble, and she's Australian. And she was actually before this a very pop. Um, actually, after, during and after this, she was a very uh, a popular music star in Australia. Interesting. And 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 I, she was in something that we watched before, and I think it was Caviar with Everything, and she played the dead girl. She played Padme's mother in the uh, Star really? Wars prequels. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Bringing that up uh, on that episode. Yeah, um, yeah. Interesting. I I didn't detect an accent at the very beginning, but when she mm-hmm. comes in in the second act of this episode, she has a distinctive accent. It's so funny, and you can't has, put your she, finger. She has on an it. American accent at the beginning, but I at at the time when when Columbo visits the gallery. I, at first, I thought it was a um, a British accent, but I guess it was Australian. Mm-hmm. But you only hear it quickly, very briefly. And the the other lady at the art gallery, the older lady, her name is Francine. Oh, I'm sorry, Patricia Berry. The character's name yeah, is she Francine. She looks familiar too. Okay, you're gonna die when I tell you what where she was from. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't. I, it took me a while because we talked about somebody that was in this exact same thing recently. The Twilight Zone, the movie, the freaking scariest segment that that basically is the only part of the movie that i remember with a little boy trapping all those adults yeah, in the yeah, house she played the quote-unquote mom in that oh, in that, in that sequence. Wow. yeah yeah can't remember the mom with the fishbowl and the... yeah that was a good episode that, that freaked me out too especially that, when they showed the that... sister without the mouth oh that was freakish and the God, killer cartoons. I, you know what great movie yeah, my parents watched that movie, and my dad thought, okay, we can show them this segment and the Kick the Can one. Kick the Can one is absolutely snoozeworthy. Oh, but that's I love what, that, that one. Huh. Okay, fine. You like old people. <laughs> okay. So um, back to Colombo. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. So Colombo now arrives on the scene, uh, and he's got a uh, – he's sick with the coronavirus – I swear to God, you stole my fucking joke about that. <laughs> but by by the time that this drops, we're either going to be dead of it or everybody's going to forget about it, just like SARS and H1N1 and all the other ones. Yeah, after after this, there will only be one host on the Colombo Confab podcast. <laughs> yeah, for the two episodes that are left. Um, yeah, so we better get these done, huh? 
Uh, so, yeah. anyways, yeah, Columbo's coming in, sneezing and coughing, and and I I, I don't and, know if if Peter yeah. Falk was like, you know, I want to spice this up. I want to add me sneezing <laughs> during my lines. That's the impression I get. Uh, you know what? And it, you know what really bothered me, and especially since you know we're we're in the the midst of this coronavirus shit, and people are telling you to wash your hands. He uses a handkerchief, which to blow his nose, and then he's constantly holding the handkerchief. And I'm like, that is so gross. Don't but touch it, anything. It's Don't it's touch it's me. His own snot. It's not like he's sharing it. But he's touching it. He's touching the hanky, and he's touching everything else, and it's just. That's gross. You don't. Do you think people gross. use hankies anymore? No. Only for ornamental, like, you know, sticking pocket, in your pocket. My, uh, I yeah. think that generation was before ours, because I remember my father always carried a hanky with him. Uh-huh. Always. Um, you know, not. I'm not talking, I mean, like, literally, you know, a, a cotton material. Um, and he would buy me, and I would have to carry hankies in my back pocket. You know, fold them neatly and then stuff them in my back pocket. And I had those as a kid, wherever I went. And I still have hankies. I haven't used them in years. <laughs> it probably has been, gosh, over 40 years since I used one. But I still yeah. have them. I mean, they're they're good quality. I mean, they, they, you just wash them and they're little, little square pieces of uh, cloth. It's... Uh, yeah, now people put them in their uh, coat pocket or their jacket pockets, and they're they're very fashionable. I think Harold Van Wyck has one uh, in his pocket. Likely, one scene yeah. of this. So but, yeah, so uh, yeah, Columbo arrives. He interviews Elizabeth, uh, and then escorts her to her room. I, which is a good scene. Why is that? Well, you know he 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 spends a lot of time in, throughout the series talking with. Uh, widows, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, people who have lost their loved ones, you know, whether these people are guilty or not. Clearly, obviously, we know she didn't kill her mother, but he's very sensitive and sympathetic towards her, and he needs to ask her questions. And there's a scene when he approaches her, and then he pushes her along to the uh, stairmaster, or whatever you call mm-hmm. it. What do you call that thing? Oh, oh. The thing that killed the lady Gremlins. in Gremlins. I knew you were going there. I, the one in Gremlins, though, was a different model. Um. Yeah, that was the. It's like a chair, a separate chair, and it go. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that was a. It's a good scene because they cue the music, and he's asking her questions that he needs to ask her, but he's not doing his usual Columbo shtick. He's just getting very, yes, very much and, to the and point. And the soundtrack was amazing in this episode. Yeah. I, there were it, it, it's in this scene you're talking about it was very noticeable and it was but it it was a it was a good you know, it wasn't bad it didn't draw your attention away from the scene it enhanced the scene it felt like yeah. if it was just the dialogue it would be very boring but i i really thought the music the background music was really well executed this and this isn't just this scene when we see the playback of the murder uh, on the security screen for the where the security guard is it does this ding 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 like this clockwork mm-hmm. kind of music because of course it's a it's a technical crime yeah. it's you know and there's a couple other scenes that uh, I think the ending and the scene with the horrible cl- clown doll as well um, not because the clown doll is horrible and yes, is. should be burned yes, should. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm going to tell you though I think by the time he leaves this house on the night of the murder he knows that Harold's the murderer. Oh, definitely, and uh, that, I want to I want to talk about that. But hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Let's. I want to I want to talk about the scene where Columbo meets Harold for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. So at some point he goes back downstairs. He is, for whatever reason, Columbo's behind the curtains, but not to the window that would have the murderer suspected murderer would have crawled through. It's another window entirely. He's behind the curtains, just hiding there. Don't know why. And uh, but anyways, Harold's talking to another officer about you know what he thinks happened with like the plant falling over and and um, anyways, so Columbo comes out of the oh no, he, Columbo sneezes or coughs and so Harold goes to the curtains, moves it and sees Columbo hiding behind it. I don't why why is he doing that? I I know why why, uh, why Columbo is back there because he doesn't understand Window, windows he explains this. Well, no, no. He was, well. He says he was checking the window, 
but he also doesn't understand how the killer knew to walk into that room and not be seen on the camera. Uh, It's as if the killer, and that's a clue. It's one of the first clues that comes out. How did the killer know that there was a camera there and to walk along the side of the room like that? Because Uh if the killer had come, like, I think he said three feet forward, they would have caught him. Yeah. So, So, yeah, at this point, Harold shows uh, Columbo the the tape room, the recording room. I I don't even know what you call that. Um, It's all lined in this, like, aluminum walls or steel walls. I'm not sure it looks... Straight out of mind over mayhem. All we needed was Robbie the robot yes. and Steven it, Spellberg it in there. It looked like if you were watching Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> the very first series, it would fit right in. I mean, monitors, big ones, little ones, red buttons, blue buttons, yellow buttons, green buttons, everywhere. Like wall to wall, monitors and buttons. <laughs> yeah. It is extremely outdated equipment. I mean, you've got this, you've got the super watch that tells the, the, the digital time. All of this is extremely outdated, but I don't think that affects the uh, the plot at all. I mean, it's yeah. they, they explain everything very well. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. no. So, were... so they discuss where the cameras are hooked up and yeah, and what the, what the monitors can see and then what Baxter, the security guard, can see. Excuse me, can see. Um, and he ends up giving the master copy of the murder, the recorded murder, to Columbo to take back to to uh i guess his team tape team or whatever the people that that law enforcement that review that kind of stuff um but yeah so colombo now goes he interviews baxter um and at this point colombo starts asking some some questions that lead you to believe he doesn't necessarily believe harold as a matter of fact he i think harold is the prime suspect at this point now my Mm -hmm. question to you why do you think that is you feel you said a moment ago that um, that that you got that impression as well, but why? Why was Columbo suspicious of him? What What do you think it was? Okay, well, well, first of all, Columbo kind of suspected it was an inside job mm-hmm. because the killer knew where the camera was. All right, and it's not going to be the wife. Who else is it going to be? And then when he's talking to Baxter and he talks about how instead of signing in with the clipboard. Um, Van Wick wrote the number for the art gallery on a magazine mm-hmm. and h- handed it back. He's, and Columbo says, well, it's just when, uh, you know, maybe it's this this problem I have, but when somebody is doing something for the same thing, all the same way all the time, and then they suddenly do something different, I always look and, and see more into it than that's than it's actually there. Yeah. And I think that's when he starts, the, the, the seed is planted, and he thinks it may be Van Wick that's behind this. However... Van Wick has a has a perfect alibi because he was at the art gallery, yeah. and he tells Van Wick at the end that he actually believed him about the art gallery for the longest time. Yeah. So, so. so the next morning, uh, Columbo arrives onto the property. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has dog in hand. I really wish dog would have been used more in the series as maybe finding clues. You know, um, I don't know how you would find clues in this particular episode, but. I can only think of one episode where Dog finds a clue, and that's the the most dangerous match with the uh, garbage disposal. But I, I wish I wish Dog did more than I guess comedy relief did, or comic relief. Do you want us to dress him up with like a little hat and a and a, and a trench coat? Yes, and, be and like a little, a little, a little magnifying glass. the crime dog. Yeah. Or, or like they're doing something, and then all of a sudden, dog comes in, and he spilled a potted plant, and they're like, "Oh, you dog!" And then they pause, and the credits roll, which is what they would do in Mrs. Columbo. So, God, I'm so glad we don't have to watch Mrs. Columbo anymore. So, uh, <laughs> so Harold, uh, okay, so yeah, Columbo uh, starts walking around to the side of the house um, to review the the. Um, the entry or the what did he call it this episode the uh whatever where, where the burglar would have point of entry yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah uh so he leaves dog in the car and um harold walks out and dog is just barking and he, i'm sure harold's thinking well and he's he's a rich snob i'm sure he's wondering what's this piece of shit car doing here and this dog is barking at me so he goes to look at the license plate and then, uh, for some reason, I guess he decides to walk around the back of the house and discovers Columbo in his garden. Well, it's not a garden. It's a... It's a really 
Fucking nice. Oh, yes. They've got some nice plants there. But uh, Columbo notices there in the entry and exit, there's no... You can see the footsteps coming and going, but you don't see where if they would have jumped out of the window, there's no deep impressions of the feet hitting the soil. Because the soil is soft. It should have left deeper impressions right. of the of the shoes. And also notices a, a good or interesting clue um, is that there's no soil or mulch on the interior because whoever was on the outside would have brought that in went into the home with them. And then Van Wick says, well, Lieutenant, maybe they took their shoes off just like mm-hmm. you did right now. And then I will never forget this, but this bugs me so much. And this is the Foley department. Hmm. Columbo takes his forefinger and taps his head three times with it. And you can actually hear the... Yeah, they they do that throughout I, this episode. I don't like that. Ugh. Why are they putting a sound <laughs> effect to that? that. That's, and it's not a hokey... It's just like, that does not make that sound when you tap your head like that. Don't do that. I'm doing it right now, and it's not making that noise. <laughs> and he goes, stupid, huh? Ah, I should have known. I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah, <sighs> hey, that was distracting, definitely. Um, yeah. So... We go back outside. Harold leaves for work, and um, Columbo stays around, and he, he starts to look for Dog, and finds out Dog is jumping on the poor uh, wife Elizabeth, but she seems to be she seems to enjoy it. Um, yeah, and so Colum- this gives Columbo kind of an opportunity to talk to her privately without Harold, uh, and and it goes over what she remembers the night of the murder. And she says that she woke up at some point because she thought she heard something. She doesn't say she heard a shot, but yeah. she called her mother's room. Her mother wasn't yeah. there. Oh, then she called and Harold she also said, in the study. She said she saw movement, too, which easily to dismiss at the beginning, but will make sense later. But she does yeah. see movement. Here's the sound, sees movement, and, yeah, calls her mother. There there are things in this that we haven't mentioned that were shown that are not really revealed as good clues until the mm-hmm. end. But she says she woke up, she saw her nightgown at the end of the bed, she saw the stupid clown doll in the Morticia Adams wicker chair on the other side of the room. He was eating some poor child's soul, probably. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, um... <laughs> And uh, uh, that's how probably she ended up. I bet you fifty dollars that Harold gave her that damn doll. <laughs> Who would give uh, only only somebody that would be into like S and M and shit like that would give their wife a horror doll to stick in their room? No, it's it's terribly creepy, and I I really don't know when clowns became creepy. Because now, like, clowns are just fucking creepy all the time. I, I, I'm just wondering, Poltergeist. you know... Poltergeist is what did it to me. Pol- you think Poltergeist it did, that's what, is what that's did what it? That's what did it to me, so... Mm. I had a clown doll that my grandma gave me that was very similar to the one in Poltergeist. Me too. I had one very but, similar. So. My parents gave two for yeah. Christmas. Couldn't sleep with it in the room. My parents couldn't figure out why it freaked me out. <laughs> I, you know what? I know what the first time I was afraid of clowns. I had a uh, he was my mom's cousin, Freddie. Just saw him recently. He's very old now. He's using a walker, and he had a game room upstairs mm-hmm. in his house that had he had like jackpot or not uh, slot uh, slots uh-huh. and a pool table. Yeah, it was kind of cool. So I loved going up there. The problem is that at the foot of the steps, there is in the, in the there was this gigantic like. I think it was like a six by four painting of a sad clown. And it was a horror inducing. It was dark. And you know, in the movie it, nice. when um, Stan Stanley uh-huh. is not just the clown in it, but Stanley is afraid of that picture in the synagogue yeah, of the yeah, old yeah, lady. Yeah. That's what it was like, except it was a clown. And I wasn't, I was afraid I had to have, I couldn't go upstairs and play with all the toys because that fucking clown picture. I'm was sure there. it was haunted. I'm sure it was. Oh my god! And I don't know what happened to it, but I saw uh, well, hopefully this guy, someone my it. cousin. I saw my cousin Freddie recently, and I said, "Whatever happened to that clown painting?" And because we were at a funeral, and he said, "Oh, I think I sold it off." And I'm like, "Because I'd really like to have it." Why? <laughs> and, and, and well, just put it in your partner's so... bedroom and. <laughs> 
it's just so fucking kitschy and creepy and not in like you know but anyway i'm sorry clown dolls we were talking about oh yeah the conversation with uh elizabeth uh van wick Uh uh-huh um i don't remember exactly the sequence of events after this conversation but um there is a private conversation between uh harold and elizabeth and this is he is he says something truly awful to her that i i I never really got it until recently not watching it for this but before this um she's she basically says to him he's working in the study and she says to him you know with mother gone you know maybe i can you know i can take an active part in 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 the business you know because she i guess she inherited her mother's stock Mm -hmm. and so she's now primary shareholder and he actually turns to her all pissed off and he says, do you really think I would work in a, con- in, a in a company it's in a subservient yeah. position to my wife? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you fucking cock knocker. He is such a jerk. Um, yeah. Apparently women only exist for him to fuck in Malibu and, and use, and North you, Hollywood. And use their, their riches, yeah. Yeah, so he's... He's not the biggest Colombo yeah, you, asshole even though murderer. Mar- Margaret but was he, a jerk too. You really kind of side with her, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a, yeah, even he, more of a asshole. But um, yeah. So the next scene, uh, Colombo ends up going to the Grant Gallery. Oh golly! Yeah, and he, he speaks to Francine, I guess, who owns the gallery or runs or manages the gallery. Um, and so we have another little comedic moment. So he's walking around. Of course, she thinks he's a potential future client uh who's reviewing art for his home um so he's looking at one uh and you know of course he's flabbergasted by the pricing which by today's standards i I mean i would i really wish i had at hand the 1970s uh calculator of what 700 dollars then would be worth now i'm sure it'd be three times as much yeah, on, on professional podcasts, they'd look that up, but yeah, I didn't no, have the time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and then he'd go to another one. Oh, that that one's 1200 You know, in each 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 piece he looks at, it's getting worse and worse. One's like the, the soul of a dog or ghost of a dog or something. And it's just, yeah. it looks like a big black dildo bong thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and that was 1200 And then he looks at another one. It looks like a oversized wind chime that you could get at Tuesday morning. Um, but that was like forty six hundred, I think, or something like that. And so he's he, wait. I just had I have just I just had to pause and and, and lament that uh, you actually mentioned Tuesday morning, which oh. for those of you uh, that don't know what the Tuesday morning. When I hear Tuesday morning, I think hungover. Um, but for those of you who don't don't know what Tuesday morning is, it's a store that just sells crap. Uh, that. They couldn't sell at other stores. Yeah, they used to sell like home goods. Um, yeah. Oh fuck! I fucking you, hate home you, goods. You can you can buy a couch there, rugs, silverware, pans, shower, uh, a, a cur- shower curtains. Says, <laughs> yeah, a sign that says "Live, Laugh, Love." Right. Yeah, and it's all it's all like yeah. discounted rates, I guess, because they made too much of. I don't know what, how they get to stop. I don't know what it, it's. I, it's I totally it's, random. It, you can go to a different store and they have random shit. The white, the white ladies where I live fucking love that place. I will say this. I bought a they, they have a really great collection of, of candies there, by the way. Like they, yes, they, they, they have do. got those almonds yes, that do. are in those, those uh, pastel-colored can- hard-shelled candies, but they're almonds. They have those there. I should have bought some when I was oh. going Anyways. They also, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, Go so ahead. Colombo goes to the next piece, and he goes, what is this? How much does this cost? And it's just the ventilation shaft for the air conditioner in the building. See, okay, I think I'm going to... Okay, the first two times I saw this, I thought that was funny about the ventilator mm-hmm. shaft. But I, I really think that the next thing that he says is way funnier. He mentions to the lady that his wife paints. And she's genuinely interested. Like, oh, she does? Really? She's an artist. She goes, he goes yeah, uh, she gets these things, you know... They got the little numbers, and they tell you what oh, color right. it's. Yeah. You, he basically paint des- by describes yeah. paint by numbers without calling it paint by numbers, and she just looks at him like she's speaking to a special person yeah. who takes a short bus to work. Yeah, a short bus. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think her opinion of him drastically changed after that that comment. Um, 
yeah, and I, I thought it was interesting when she showed interest that his wife was also an artist. But do you think she mm-hmm. really was interested, or was she just trying to smooth over conversation in order to get him to buy something? I don't know. I think she primarily just wanted him to get out of the fucking art gallery so they can continue drinking coffee or whatever it was that they mm-hmm. were doing there. Oh, so. and and so uh, we also so he talks to Francis and then the receptionist who I can't remember the character name, but um, he talks about. You know, did are you sure Harold showed up? Could it have been an impersonator? No, he did show up and look. He he brought his his invitation. Here it is. Uh, so that's a big clue too, by the way. Uh, so he mm-hmm. left his invitation there. I don't know why he would have. They obviously knew who he was. Why would he bring the invitation to this thing? W- because we need it for the end of the show. Okay. So I so, guess. anyways, and you know. it's it's not computers so okay i don't know i don't know and don't forget that girl didn't know who he was she was a new girl so yeah and he, he definitely you know, just in case he definitely liked her he had the eyes for her. yeah even even yeah. tipping his glass to her across the room yeah when he heard the the phone call came for his mother-in-law's fucking murder okay <laughs> okay um so uh yeah we go back to the house and Colombo is followed by a police officer with a kitty litter box. Uh, and he's got an experiment he wants to perform. Uh, so he sets the uh, the box of sand down on the ground, asks, asks uh, Elizabeth to go to her room, um, and then discharges a revolver into the sand, which it kind of has those little building moments of Colombo where... I mean, we, I think we knew before this, but Columbo's not a fan of guns. And just mm-hmm. the way he handles the gun. I mean, at the very beginning when he asked for the revolver from the uh, police officer, he goes, uh, what does he say? Is it is it loaded? Yes. Is the safety on or off? It's off. Can you... Or no, it's on. Well, he hands the gun back to the officer to turn it back on. He doesn't even know how to take a safety off. <laughs> um, and this t- it tells Harold, like, I hate guns. Um uh, but yeah, so he fires. Uh, yeah, go ahead. He says something too. He goes, "You may want to put your fingers in your ears, sir. This is going to be pretty loud." And Harold goes, "I can handle it. Like you are wasting my time." <laughs> yeah, so yeah he's obviously getting annoyed at this point. Yeah, this is the point where Van Wick is Van Wick is like, "I can't stand this guy anymore. This needs to stop." Really? Yeah. Um, but what Matt? What what follows is a masterful clue. That Columbo probably expected to be be the end of the episode. Um, he fires the gun, and then asks um, Elizabeth upstairs, "Did you hear anything?" And I can't remember what she says, but the the door opened. She says the door opened, and okay, I I I don't know if I heard anything though. So Columbo goes upstairs to the bedroom. With Harold and and, and Elizabeth, mm-hmm. and in what I thought was kind of creepy, he l- lays in the bed with his shoes on, which drove me crazy. You know, okay, could Elizabeth, you imagine? You know, sitting... Here's this guy; he probably smells of cigars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's the cleanest guy either. I don't know if I'd want him in my bed. No, I wouldn't want him in my bed either. No, no. Although I've had smelly people in my bed before and regretted it later on. Ew. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Um, no, really, seriously. If you're going to go out to a bar to pick people up, wash your asshole. Wash what? your asshole. Never mind. I'm not going to get started. Okay, let's change the subject right away. Okay. So so he he's talking about how she saw the, the creepy clown doll when she woke <laughs> she up didn't on call the it, night of the she murder. She didn't call it that, but yes. No, she just called it the toy clown. I think she literally called it the toy clown doll. Mm-hmm. And he makes the point that the door opened because there was a gunshot. Mm-hmm. And the reason that she saw the clown doll is because the door opened and let light, light in. Because yeah. you couldn't, see it. You couldn't this, see it normally with the door closed. And this is one of those moments where they use the soundtrack very effectively. Because they use it sparingly here. And they have that... Like, oh my god, this is the gotcha clue. Yeah. But it's not the gotcha clue because Harold says, "Oh, uh, you know, Elizabeth, remember last uh, last month when we had the Friedmans here 
and the back door was opening on shut all, all the time. That that's, sounds more like a French <laughs> bus, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. And he even says, "I'm sorry, your little parlor trick proved nothing." <laughs> <laughs> he didn't laugh. That was me laughing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't and think he, he laughs hysterically. Once in this whole thing. He does. <laughs> Your little parlor trick proved nothing. Yeah, that would be Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, as the as the killer. Oh, he'd be a horrible Columbo killer. Uh, anyway, um, and so what happens next? Uh, so uh, Columbus oh! of the, uh, Barney's Beanery. That's what's next. Oh God, yeah. Let's talk about this short twenty minute, twenty second scene. Yeah. He's at a restaurant or a bar it's or something Barney's like Beanery, that. Barney's Beanery. I'm telling you. <laughs> but Barney's not there because He's his day off. apparently. <laughs> Yeah, it's his day off because they've got some asshole working there. And I it looked like Columbo went behind the bar to get himself a, a burger. A uh, ketchup. To, to get himself ketchup, mm-hmm. and it was empty. So he says to the guy that works there, uh, ketchup's empty. And the guy goes, okay, just, just wait one second, fella, because he's watching the football game. Right. He's watching the Cougar game. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the uh, football team in I, the all i caught was the cougars uh, oh, okay. won the game or something like that but um so uh yeah so he colombo i guess hits uh or gets an idea watching the game because it's got um playback um mm-hmm. instant replay I, I don't know i wasn't paying that much attention um anyways uh so colombo goes back to the police department and has Arthur, the son there, to review the tape together. Um, and they have the tapes side by side. I guess one scene where uh, it's before the murder, and then one scene mm-hmm. immediately following the murder. Mm-hmm. And he's looking them at them both. And I, you kind of get this highlights for children thing. What's the difference between the two pictures? Yes, and, and I'm looking, and I'm looking scene. at it too. I'm trying to figure out: was well, it the lighting? Is it the shadow? Is it like he? And Columbo even says, or no, it wasn't Columbo. I think Arthur was saying, well, "What are you looking for? Are you looking for, um, you know, those specific things?" And I think Columbo also brings up he's looking to see if there's different time on a clock or anything that might show a lapse in the two images that should be side by side, you know. But what's so cool about the scene is that if you know what it is, you can see it. Mm -hmm. But the first time you watch this, you can't fucking see Mm -hmm. it. But it becomes obvious after you've seen the episode what it is, that what the prime difference is. So Columbo shows up at the Van Wick evidence with a crumpled paper bag and you know... Yep, it's it's almost over. (laughs) This is it. Final scene. And he, there's a, it's very interesting how this is done because he says to Van Wick, he says, um, can we go in your, uh, your tape recorder well, well, room? Well, he does say one thing I do want to bring up before we get to that. So when Columbo shows up, Harold is obviously pissed off. I, I'm tired. Will you leave me alone? We will we'll give you the guest room or whatever. So something to that effect. Yeah. And Columbo yeah. goes, oh, this will be the last time. <laughs> I won't be bothering you after this. Yep, and he doesn't. It's true. <laughs> and we, the viewers, are all giddy because now he, we know he's got what he needs to yeah. put him away. He's got something. You know. We don't know what it is, but he's got something, something in that bag. Anyway, so sorry. Go on. So he tells Margaret. Columbo tells Margaret, "Ma'am, you may want to just wait here in the study, and we're going to go into the tape recording room and." He pulls up the two tapes just like he did before, and he's like, do you see it? No, I don't see anything. You don't see it? And we realize that Van Wake's invitation to the art gallery, his printed invitation, was on the de- on his desk at the time that the murder would occurred, which obviously means that, I mean, Columbo says, if it was there, you would have had to come back home stepped over the body, got the invitation, and left. Uh-huh. This means that this was recorded before you left for the art gallery. Right. And what is so great... This is... Um, I, I can't say enough about this scene. This is actually one of my all-time favorite scenes in Columbo. Because Van Wick is pretending like either he doesn't see it yet because he doesn't realize it, or he's pretending he doesn't see it. And it's actually Elizabeth who has, you know, come up to the doorway 
And she says, Harold, that's your invitation to the art gallery. Yeah. And then he kind of, he loses it. Yeah. And he does. He, lo- yeah, he loses he, his cool. He, um, and I think it's interesting at this point, he knows Elizabeth has got to lie for him. Yeah. So he even says, no, you remember Elizabeth? I, I, uh, I told you your mom's on her way. I, I forgot what he said exactly, but he's asking. Yeah. That's when Elizabeth knows now he's asking me to lie. And he's guilty. He, he, there would be no other reason. Um, and so, Elizabeth, I'm, I'm surprised he did that, uh, quite honestly. I would think he yeah. wouldn't want to do that. But, um, yeah, so she she, uh, she uh, says no. That's He's lying. Um, and she's crying. She's you know, doing the, the it's, silent it's cry. A very, no, it's a very, very sullen and sad scene, uh, how this episode ends. Because... It basically, she 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 watches the officer escort uh, Harold away, and she turns around to face Columbo, uh, and you see that one tear going down her cheek. And Columbo, mm-hmm. he kind of looks down, pans down. You don't see what he's looking at. He turns off the monitors behind him, and the credits roll. Very yeah, it's, very sad ending. It it, it is it is. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I'm gonna reveal this now. I mean, we're almost to the to the um to the end, but. It, it is the best for me, the the greatest Columbo conclusion in Gotcha Clue in the entire series. Yeah, um, I'm just going to say that right now, and I'm, I'm more to that a little bit later. But is there anything else you want to uh, add to this before one, we go to commercial? Yeah, one thing Elizabeth says to Harold right before Columbo comes in with the tapes, she says, "I'm so happy it wasn't the both of you." And Harold says, "What? What?" Mm. He says, "He says what? What do you mean?" It should have been obvious to him, but he says, no, what do you mean? He goes, well, I could have lost you both that night. I'm glad you you left the house. And he just hugs her. And instead of saying something, yes, my dear, oh, thank God, or, or saying anything, he just kind of looks, you know, across the room, kind of, no, just expressionless. Yes. Uh, he could care it's less. It's a good scene. You know? Yeah. It's she, good she scene. Loves, and... She loves him. Uh, she loves her mother. You know, and, and that was probably the one thing, you know, because she seemed pretty rational after the death of her mother. I mean, I don't, we don't know how close they were, but they obviously got along. But we don't know emotionally how close she was with her mother. But you definitely get the uh, get the feeling that her sanity was was there because of her husband. If it was, if her mm-hmm. husband wasn't there, she probably would have lost her mind uh you know uh, just yeah. gone into the brush she would have killed her mother yeah um kill her mother hmm. yeah maybe she would have killed her mother because i don't think that i i personally don't think the relationship between her and her mother was that great but when it comes to hey my husband killed my mother i'm not gonna fucking lie for you you know um yeah so yeah she could have she could have lied and it, it would have saved him in colombo's case uh you know he, he wouldn't have been able to prove it was him. I mean, maybe you would have found a different clue, but whatever. I do. I do have my thought. I, I do think that Harold did legitimately love Elizabeth. Um, I don't think so. There are ma- there are many scenes and little touches where you know he holds her, he kisses her. I think uh, it's he all does a play. Things, I don't. Uh, I I I guess I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you know he. That doesn't mean that he's you know not a that doesn't mean he's not a misogynist pig mm-hmm. because obviously he's sleeping around with her but that may be because of something else that i don't want to talk about really because i don't know that much about people in wheelchairs but do you if you know what i'm talking about i, I know but, where you're going uh, with that, yeah. yeah i uh yeah hmm. so um you ready to review this yeah let's review this after a word from our sponsors Great. After these messages, we'll be right back. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off. The The clapper. clapper. Let you turn things on or off from anywhere in the room. Just plug in the clapper and a television, lamp, stereo, almost anything you want to clap on and off. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off. The Clapper is now available at Thrifty Draw. Get yours today. Makes a great gift. So, Sean, you ready? Yes. I think Uh, you should go first this time. 
Okay, well, what's the number? What's what? What number? Are All we right. At? What would you rate tonight's episode? One out of three feet. Oh, because if the robber was three more feet into the room, he would have been seen by the camera. Yeah. Well, Steve, let me take a sip of my cocktail here. Mmm. Bourbon. Steve, I love this episode, and it's the reason that I showed it to you when when you first you know expressed some interest. Um, I think they have the perfect clues in this. Um, I'm going to give it two and three quarters out of three feet. Uh, I'm going. I'm shaving a little bit off because I'm not a big fan of the actor who plays the killer, Oscar Werner. Yeah. It's not be- that he does a bad job, but I think that they could have um, fleshed him out a little more. And believe it or not, for a shorter episode, this is Pat. Okay. I think that I would have traded the actor out. Um, I understand that Oscar Werner was a prominent actor. Um, I would have loved to see somebody like... Um, I-, I don't know. I can't think of a good actor. To I mean, maybe... Uh, a young Billy Connolly or something, you know, doing this. Um, but this is pretty damn perfect as far as uh, clues go and as far, as far as a solid mystery goes. Um, I can think of very few cases in which the gotcha clue at the end mm-hmm. is going to put the, the, the murderer behind bars for good. And this is one of those cases because there is absolutely no accounting for why that invitation was on the desk when she was killed. Right. Um, I think if he had a good lawyer, um, the lawyer would say, well, yeah, he came into the house and got his invitation, but um, he didn't see the dead body there, which would be virtually impossible. A jury's not going to believe that. Yeah. Um, the characterization is very subtle between Harold and Elizabeth and the fact that he's just basically a... He's a womanizer, and um, the only person that actually talks about it is is Margaret before she dies. Um, I think that the scene with the false—I I call it the false gotcha—and that's the scene in the bedroom with the creepy clown doll. Um, I think that's superb, and I think I may be wrong, and I meant to look this up, but that you know we don't do research. I think I read in the Columbo file book that this was actually Peter Falk, one of Peter Falk's favorite episodes. Oh. Although I, I have heard things since then, or read things since then that say otherwise. Um, I, I love this because it's just a really great classic. Just, it's it's heavy on the clues, and it relies on the clues, and there's a little bit of characterization. And ironically, it's even a little bit padded, because it's one of the shorter episodes, but the scene with Columbo in the art gallery is really long. Is it like ten minutes or something like that? Surely not. And all, he, all yeah, all he's there is to get a copy or, or get the invitation that Harold brought to the to the art show. Yeah. Um, I've seen this several times. I, I enjoy it immensely. Um, I, I know that you're going to have opposite feelings about it. Um, I guess that's Why fine. Do you say that? I well because of things that you've said. Um, but. <laughs> I was uh, one of the other Columbo podcasts. Um, they they're no longer doing it because they you know ran out ran out of episodes. Uh, just one more thing, um, podcast. This was their last episode, and they just fucking lambasted it. Really? And they made fun of the uh, the technology, yeah. you know, the the videotape, and you know the the digital watch. And I'm like, it's fucking 1975, yeah. you know, um, and it's it it's in very much in line for me with a 90s episode called caution murder can be hazardous to your health with which i've heard criticisms that that that's just too full of clues and there's not a lot to go but i i love this i i think i i don't know if this would be in my top 5 it used to be but it might it, it would certainly be in my top like 7 okay mm-hmm. And I'm saying that because we're going to do an episode about that later on. But, um, man, I, I just feel that the last three episodes of this podcast that we talk about, I'm like, these are probably the three, some of the three best Columbo episodes ever made, which 
we'll talk about a little bit later when we spin the wheel for the last time. Uh, so with that, I hand the gauntlet to you, Steve. What did oh, you think wait, wait. about? Did you give back? a number? Uh, two and three quarters out of three feet. Okay. So I, 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 I think I enjoyed this episode more than my first initial watching or viewing. Um, hearing you talk about it really helped that mm-hmm. as well. Uh, I, I, while watching it, I find it, I, I don't, it's like you said, it's a short episode, but some of the scenes just felt lengthy to me. And I don't, I don't know why that is. I mean, cause there's some good comedy in there. I mean, I love the scenes with dog. Um, I think there were some excellent clues kind of sprinkled here and there. Um, the scene in the art gallery, I thought that was fun, even though it, it did feel tacked on. Uh, there was really no really bad acting, and I, I I hate to say this because I think he's dead now, but yeah, Oscar Werver, Wer, Wer, how do you say his last name? Werner, Werner I believe. Werner. He. Uh, so I agree with you on him. Um, he died not long after this, I believe. He had some kind of cancer. Oh, that's but horrible. Don't... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so no disrespect to the actor. I I just didn't enjoy. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy his performance. So I, maybe that's what is bringing it down for me. I, I, yeah. I mean, it was even even to the point yeah. where usually when when you see the villain, the murderer, you you kind of you you enjoy them. You enjoy their presence, and you enjoy their presence with yes, them. And there, I didn't really get any of that here. Um, and I think that's what makes. I it makes me not enjoy as much as you. Uh, I I agree. It, it, it is a good episode. There's some fun bits in here and there, and the 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 clues are good. Um, I I just didn't enjoy it, and I, and it's hard for me to put that to words. The only thing I think of is is the the uh, is Oscar. Um, there there's a scene. What we talked about, of course. Uh, I think the morning after the murder, he comes out of the house. Dog is barking in Columbo's car. He just walks away, puts his briefcase uh-huh. in its in his in his convertible, and walks away, and there's no reaction from him. There's no like, you know, I mean, he's being polite, but he could at least there could be something that showing him that he is. I don't know. He ne- there's there's nothing that he gets annoyed by mm-hmm. Columbo a lot because Columbo comes back a lot in this. But at no point do we get the impression that he's like, oh, shit, Columbo's on to me. Mm-hmm. And you get that in a lot of Columbo. I mean, we, we did a swan song. There is a scene. And you do, they, they do this a lot, like especially with Robert Culp and stuff, where they're having an innocuous conversation. Columbo walks out of the room, and the murderer's expression changes from one of like happiness to like, oh, fuck, i got to watch out for this yeah. guy. Col- we, don't get this. we don't get yeah, that with yeah. this. We don't get that. It, it's, it's almost as if the entire time he's looking down on Columbo, well, and he assumes he's o- an idiot. The, the only scene time. that I think I enjoyed was when Harold lost his cool. At the very end, when he realized oh, yeah. oh, Columbo yeah. got him, and he's freaking yeah. out, he's yelling, he's shaking his hands, you know, and he's basically throwing a hell mary pass to his wife, hoping that she'll cover for him. That was that was probably the best scene with with Columbo and and the murderer uh, in the same scene for me. It, it, yeah, I, I, it was it was the best one of the best conclusions for me mm-hmm. ever. I mean, the the the, the gotcha clue was great. Um, because it was a thing that like, oh, can I see this? What are they talking about? When it's revealed, he loses it. And then, of course, when the police... Well, you you talked about it and the, the reaction between Elizabeth and him. Um, but this... this I, I'm i not sure if this is going to yeah. come up again for me when we do some of our, our you know, our ending uh, episodes. And we're going to talk yeah. about that a little bit later. So. But uh, I really love this episode, yeah. and and that's why I showed it to you. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. And I'll admit, um, it this did not win me over. It was it was the next one. But for I, me I, to I, score it uh, out of three, uh, you know, like I said, my my enjoyment increased after hearing you talk about it. Uh, but I, I'm gonna still give it not a very healthy score. Quite honestly, uh, I wouldn't say. I would definitely say not. Sh- do not show this one to someone who's never. Watch Columbo before. I don't think this would be one of those episodes. Uh, it's not not the worst, obviously, um, but I guess I'd give it up. I one out of three. 
So, mm, that's bad. Yeah, I really, I don't think I want to revisit this ever again. To be quite honest, I'm, I, I enjoy wow. talking with you about. It. I had more fun talking about it with you than I did watching it. Well, that's kind of a compliment, Steve. There you I'm, go. I'm See. very flattered. Well, thank you very much. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right. So, um, we are going to uh, talk about um, this is the feedback portion of the show, which is, uh, um, I, I want to say, I, 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 I'm going to have a chance to say this again later on. Steve, you're, you're not on the Twitter. You don't do the Twitter I sometimes, feeds, sometimes jump on there. I just forget. That's all right it's uh we have gotten a lot of love on twitter and i just want to say hi to jane and lisa and both simons um when we did our doctor who podcast and we released an episode you know i'd say hey episode of 75 of the tardis tavern is here and we're going to talk about city of death i think we would get two likes um when i do this for this show uh, i get 15 likes hmm. And it's kind of reaffirmed that, you know, we're nearing the end of our journey here. And I think that we're doing good work as far as people are concerned. Yes. We're doing God's, we are doing God's work. Yes. Yes. If God was a Columbo fan, which I'm sure he is or she is, I think it's a she, but, um, it's interesting. Every time we, we, uh, just we're recording on a Sunday and this last uh, Monday was, uh, the lady in waiting episode, which is the conclusion of our penultimate season. And I find that when a season is over, people come out and they, they leave reviews. So I'm going to read two reviews and we're going to go talk about a couple emails because, uh, we, for some reason got a deluge of emails, but I don't want to talk about them all because I don't think people like that. But, um, Shout out to uh, somebody named Wintertime51. Hmm. Wintertime says, great listening. Do you love Columbo? Do you know everything about Columbo? Do you expect these guys to know as much as you? Who cares? This one podcast yes, one is no. so much <laughs> This podcast is so much fun. I discovered it a couple of months ago and have been blowing through it with glee. <laughs> He's hmm. blowing through it. Or she. But... Ordered the DVD collection. Now have to go out and find a DVD player. Love these young men. Oh, I like the part where he says young men. Oh. oh. I haven't called a, been called a young man since I was at the old people's home. Anyway. Um, and also, this was just left the other day, like literally two days ago, by uh, somebody named Dion de Mamarie. Dion de oh. Mamarie. Uh, she said, and I say she because it's Dion. Uh, honestly, this is the best pod. Oh, oh, she. Uh, it, the title of the review is the premier Colombo podcast. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but I think it means the champagne of Colombo podcasts. Oh, nice. um, personally, I would say we were more like a Boone's Farm of Colombo podcasts. <laughs> Um, she says, honestly, this is the best, the best podcast for fans of Columbo. It's absolutely hilarious. The hosts clearly enjoy talking about the show, and it's not all serious and analytical. They never have any guests, which is awesome, because sometimes a bad guest ruins an episode in other podcasts <laughs> that shall, rename, shall remain nameless. It's just Sean and Steve and our favorite, favorite lieutenant. I'm unsure why people have complained about the language... It isn't excessive, and honestly, the show Columbo itself is about murder. You know, killing people. If your kids are listening, you should probably ask yourself (laughs) why you're fine with murder and not strong language. And if it bothers you yourself, tap the brakes on your covered wagon and redirect yourself to the 1800s. (laughs) So, yeah, you know, we haven't sworn a lot yet, really. So I'm just going to say, just to straighten things, cunt. Fuck. Uh-huh. Cocksucker. Okay. Right. Okay, so better? we have a lot of emails. Got that out of your system? Yeah, I feel, okay. a, I feel, it's, it's, I feel like Dr. Pimple Popper has done a number on me. I don't even know what that means. And I know, I know a lot, you don't even know what that I means? No clue. Steve, Steve, Steve. That's, yeah, that's me. Let me tell you. What? Do you enjoy watching people pop no. pimples? No, no, no. Okay. Well, I find it incredibly that satisfying. Is absolutely the most disgusting thing i've ever heard there's a was a youtube channel is that what this is yes it's 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 dr pimple Why? popper how did you uh, find this 
My mom really enjoys it, oh. and one time oh. her and I sat up. We we I just freaking love watching people just. You go in. You ever have no. like a really bad wound or an infection that has to be lanced? No. Well, I have, and it feels really good. No. And watching these videos <sighs> makes me think of that and how much relief. And Doctor Pimple Popper herself said on Tosh Point oh, that it helps people recover from panic attacks. They watch that. They watch Popples. No, that gives Pop- me panic attacks. Pimples. Oh my god, okay. that's disgusting. All right, let's go on to next to an email. Just move on all right so I, i'm i'm you know we have a lot of email um that's great so i'm not going to read it all i'm gonna uh, we'll we'll save some for next okay. time um so we have an email from ed this is sh- th- these are all short folks so don't worry um this is from ed d he says i want to thank while i can thank you no i'm sorry he says i want to say while i can thank mm-hmm. you it has been a fun ride that is ending far too soon i will follow mm-hmm. you to your next project great. And if it's if it's half as fun as good as Columbo Confab, it will still be fun. And you know what, Ed? I just want to say that Steve and I did have a plan a while back for to cover a different show after we were done with Columbo Confab. We've changed our mind, and I think actually the, the idea that we're doing now is better than the one we had before. So we're not going to say what it is, but uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll save that for the uh, final. Yes, uh, Bill. Um, wrote in. Um, Bill um, wrote a really long email. Um, Dear Sean and Steve, I've been enjoying the previous seasons of your Columbo Confab podcast, and while doing so, a few things came to mind regarding the various episodes. So in no no particular order, I've listed a few observations Mm -hmm. and opinions that you may or may not find interesting. Okay. Forgotten Lady. Mm -hmm. That's the one with Janet Mm -hmm. Lee. I noticed an interesting parallel at the home of Dr. and Mrs. Willis. Mrs. Dr. Willis and his wife are obviously several years apart, and I noticed that Raymond and his wife, Alma, are several hmm. years apart right. as well. Raymond and Alma are the servants. The servants. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Raymond and Alma, both Morris Evans and Linda Gay Scott both appeared on episodes of Batman. Mr. Evans played the puzzler, <laughs> and Miss Scott played Riddler's Mall Moth. Also, Sam Jaff and Francine York made, appeared on Batman episodes as well. Okay. Negative reaction. Here, this is your favorite mm-hmm. there, Steve. So, you you know, perk up for, for goodness sake. Um, negative reaction. Uh, while I enjoyed this episode and the great performance by Dick Van Dyke, I didn't really like Columbo's gotcha ploy at the end. He was counting on Golesco getting rattled enough to identify the camera he shouldn't have been able to identify because he now needed to prove the photo of his wife had been reversed. Mm -hmm. I know it makes for a great scene, but I considered counting on him giving himself away iffy at best. He could have just as easily said, show me the crime scene photos or the crumpled photo Corumble had snuck into the group of funeral photos and Columbo would have been stuck. Personally, I think a better gotcha would have been if his wife had been wearing something reflective and upon blowing it up you could see it was Golesco taking the photo hmm. oh, yeah. by the way Mike Lelly showed up in this one as the wino in the alley showing Columbo where the mission was where he could oh find speaking Dolan. of Mike Lally was in tonight's episode too yes he was in the, in the uh, bar, bar yeah. yeah in the bar restaurant yeah. thing hold on taking it it's it's been uh two minutes it's been two minutes since I had a drink mm. Try and Catch Me. We did that one a while ago. To begin, I believe that Edmund killed his wife going by the lack of photos of of her and that little little smirk on his face when he picked up her picture at Abigail's house. I agree with this, yes. I agree, too. And there's really no real evidence... I mean, that he did it. Yeah, but but... in my my mind, or in my theory, yeah, he he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also mentioned during the podcast that Abigail Mit- Abigail Mitchell made Edmund uh, suffer a tortured death due to him dying in the dark as his oxygen ran right. out. I believe that Abigail wanted him to suffer the same type of death as Phyllis, who drowned at night alone in the ocean. Hmm. Both deaths are similar in nature as she would have been alone in the dark, also running out of os- oxygen as she drowned. Abigail probably considered it an eye for an eye death. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, it was similar to the death of Rick Carcini, and both hmm. were flying away, enjoying a drink, yes. while their victims slowly died. That's right. This is a true thing. Yes. 
Double Exposure. This is the one with the subliminal cuts mm-hmm. and Robert Culp. Culp yeah. Although Robert Culp's character shoots Chuck McCann's character in this episode, nine years later, Robert Culp's character helps save the life of Chuck McCann's character in the greatest American hero episode, <laughs> Captain Belly Buster and the Speed Factory. <laughs> I didn't catch it. I didn't that catch the title a, of that, that at all, but uh, it sounded like it might have been pretty funny. I remember yeah, that I, show, Greatest American Hero. As I'm, and I think the theme song probably uh, has aged better than the program. Is it, but. is it Believe It or Not, I'm Walking yeah. Out? Is it yeah, that's wait, right. Yeah. The Most Crucial Game. That's the one with Robert Culp as the uh, sports team uh, general manager. Yeah. When I first saw this one, I didn't see a clear motive for Paul Hanlon to murder Eric Wagner. However, over the years, after watching the character of Hanlon played beautifully by Robert Culp, it's, excuse me, it seemed that the murder was was an extension of Hanlon's ego, ego, and self entitlement and outright contempt for Eric Wagner. He clearly sees Eric as a privileged do nothing who didn't deserve to be his boss because he hadn't earned it. I believe his long game was to keep playing into Eric's infidelity to the point that once he was dead, his widow would grow to resent and later hate him for it. All the while, Hanlon would continue to run the sports empire and eventually prey upon Shirley Wagner's grief and vulnerability to the point of marrying her and gaining total control. I believe that. I think that's good. Okay, dead weight. Oh, how I... Oh, dead weight. Although, although I believe there is a Mrs. Colombo, I have also believed that most of the relatives he talks about are just contrivances to suit the occasion. He even, quote, admits to this in the final scene of Dead Weight. When Helen Stewart talks about locking herself in the closet for the rest of her life, Colombo uses his, quote, unquote, niece Marilyn as an example of why she shouldn't. She asks Colombo that just between the two of them to tell her the truth, if he really has a niece. Yeah. He responds by saying, of course he has a niece, his wife's sister, Cynthia. So apparently, Marilyn was not real. <coughs> if you believe the Mrs. Colombo was not real thing. Ooh, okay, almost done. Butterfly and Shades of Grey. It's one of my favorites. Uh, there are some interesting parallels in this episode with Fade In to Murder. Both Fielding Chase and Ward Fowler are egomaniacs. Witnessed by the fact that they both have, they both like having pictures of themselves around them. I'm just going to say right now, I think that's just William Shatner. <laughs> I, I I think William Shatner has a huge picture of himself in his in his in his uh, in his living room, in like when he was young and in, you know in Star Trek. Anyway, the other one is that in both episodes, there's an assistant using a cane to walk. Okay. Okay. In both cases, the actors using the canes, Burt Remsen, who played Ward's gopher Mark, used a cane due to an accident, and Christopher Templeton, who played the senator's assistant, Marion Burke, who had polio as a child and was forced to wear a leg brace. Sadly, both actors have since passed away. Okay, one more. A case of immunity. Oh, I like this one. Really? I have to give credit and kudos to Hector Elizondo for his portrayal of Hassan Uh, uh, Al Salah. Although playing the character in a soft-spoken manner, his facial expressions at his ever-increasing annoyance and fear of Columbo are very well done. He says, thank you for your time. I hope you find these entertaining or interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm very much enjoying yes. listening to your Columbo Confab podcast and look forward to your future discussions. In particular, Swan Song and Playback. Well, we got Playback tonight. He yeah. He also sent us another email thanking us uh, for talking about the Columbo file uh, book. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to talk to John W. Stephen Sean, I love your podcast more than Frank Columbo loves dog, chili, greasy brown bags, his car, the price of other people's shoes, <laughs> his wife. Yes, she exists. Yeah. The LL- LAPD. Grilling swarmy rich day drinking suspects, old movie stars, his nephews, institutes, his kids, his in laws, a good cheap cigar, whistling this old man, his raincoat, Barney's beanery, the old country, and Sergeant Wilson. Thank you both for the entertainment. After the show is over, let's discuss starting a show where we act as a DA and defense attorney and have some Columbo trials based on the evidence. You pick sides, but I would love to get Columbo under oath <laughs> and ask him about all the facts above, including whether he's married. Mull it over and let me know. Thank you, John. 
He says, one more thing. I, too, am a lawyer, and I know a little something about trials, not relics like the dude in Old Fashioned Murder. John, I, I think your idea of, of having a podcast with, with uh, uh, Colombo murders on trial is a good thing, uh, but that's really too much work. I'm, I'm just, I, I really can't between my busy drinking schedule and everything else. I, but it's a good idea for, for a and podcast. Your, your afternoon naps. Yeah. Yeah. Afternoon naps. And, um, I'm going to save the rest for last, but that's it. That's all we got for feedback. Um, all right, Steve, and this is going to be the last, last time, time. Yeah. Because there's only two episodes left. And spin. Well, well, before I spin, I would like to predict what I think the next episode will be. And ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea. I, I really don't. Uh, you don't remember what the last two episodes are? No. I So it's down to Bye Bye Sky High or Murder Under Glass. So I, since mm-hmm. it's a 50-50, I figured why not take a chance and, and, and guess what I think it'll be. I'm going to say it's Murder Under Glass. I have a, I have a feeling. Okay. I just have a feeling. How much money do you want to put on that? I'll put on a bottle of Johnny Walker next time I see you. Okay. All right. All right. I'm I'm or the other way around. Uh, but anyways, okay. I'm spinning it for the last time. Here we go. I totally think you make this shit up sometimes. <laughs> you're gonna pick. Okay. You're purposely gonna pick the one I didn't. No, it's it's murder under glass. Um, Is it? Yeah, it's Murder Under Glass. Full disclosure, everybody. Um, when uh, Steve, quote-unquote, spins the wheel... I'm actually sitting, um, not I, doing anything. Yeah, he's not doing anything. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually... I use a random number number generator on my phone uh, to... You know, you know, and I look at a, a spreadsheet. Every single choice that we've made... Or, they're not choices. Every spin we've made has been completely random. Except for the end. Obviously. Um, I per- I purposely saved the Bye Bye Sky High IQ murder case for the final episode because that's the one we talked about on the TARDIS. Oh, so you so did. I that's right. You to... did tell me that. Yeah, that's the only thing. So there was no – I didn't have to do it. It's, it's Murder Under Glass oh. starring Louis Jordan as a murderous food critic. Yes. Another one we watched together, Steve. Yes. I've seen this quite a so, few times. All right. Yeah. All right, All right, ladies so, uh, and gentlemen, uh, until next time, enjoy your baguettes. What? Uh, your, I'm, your I'm, sauerkraut. I'm, never and, mind. Uh, never mind. I'm, I'm trying to do Louis Jordan yeah, I don't, I, I advertising don't know with his crackers. All right. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Say good night, Steve.